Good afternoon, Virgin. Uh, may I request everybody to stand, open your uh, Bible to Acts uh, 28, verses 11 to 15. Uh, for this purpose, uh, verses 11 and 13 will be recited by uh, men, uh, 12 and 14 by women, and uh, we will be reciting all together verse 15. Are you there now? Okay, shall we begin? Men? Verse 11, men, let's begin. which is uh, common during those uh, periods. Next is verses uh, 12 to 14. Along the way to uh, Europe, there were several stops uh, because of the wind. The wind during those season wasn't uh, enough to blow the uh, ship uh, westward and going northward to Europe. And uh, verse 15, when they finally reached Rome, this is the time that the uh, brethren were so uh, delighted and uh, met with Paul, and uh, Paul was uh, encouraged with that uh, gesture. Each and every one of us is uh, familiar with a storm. It's, uh, if you're going to look at the, the anatomy of the storm, it's uh, wet and harsh. Uh, harsh meaning uh, from the rising of the waters comes uh, sometimes uh, destruction of property, and worst case, death. But uh, in both of the storms, physically, among the nationalities, I'm not uh, lifting the Filipinos on a pedestal, but this is the truth. Among the nationalities in the world, when it comes to the storm, Filipinos are the most resilient. You have seen us from those uh, past three years, worst of the storms, we survived. The economic crisis, we survived, which started in the, with the recession in the US, and then recession in Europe, and then the Asian financial crisis, and also the storms which came in and out of uh, the Philippines. But through it all, the Filipinos were synonymous with a bamboo, the tallest class. It's pliant, and uh, whenever ever the wind blows to whatever direction it goes, it just sways with the wind. That's how our believer is. And that's also how a brethren is. We should be uh, pliant like the bamboo. And uh, with this uh, storm, we can find lessons uh, from it. And one thing more with the Filipinos, it doesn't, uh, life doesn't start during uh, a storm. Even the worst of the storm, Filipinos would always find it a way uh, for an opportunity. When the water starts to rise, that's the time that uh, Filipinos become, uh, becomes a businessman. 
Yeah. Uh, as, I, as I grew up in uh, the corners of San Pandoc in Manila, when the Philippines, even a single number one storm, it will flood. What will happen is from every corner, the street is flooded, but the sidewalk is not. So in order for the students to cross, we have to pay, let's say, one real, just to cross the street on the planks of wood. That's how creative the Filipinos are. If not, if it goes uh, further, two feet deep water. Cars cannot uh, go on the streets. What we have? We have a pedicab. It's like a water rickshaw. And uh, there's one bad habit among Filipinos. If there's a relief good, they also become businessmen. They sell the relief goods. That's one uh, ugly habit the Filipinos. They sell relief goods. Instead of distributing it to those who are needy, they sell it. That's how they make money. Okay, uh, going on. Uh, in uh, every storm in life, we should be having three uh, letter P's. Okay. The first uh, P is uh, the first one. God's, God gives patience during the storm. This should be our very first attitude when it comes to a storm. When we say storm, this is a physical uh, uh, weather condition, but uh, the condition of our life. In here, we can see Apostle Paul uh, patiently waited. He was there in Malta because the wind uh, cannot blow uh, cannot uh, blow hard during that time. This has uh, been stranded for uh, uh, months, three months at the most. But when the wind uh, blew from verse 12 to 14, they started to sail. But during the course of their sailing, storms in life came in. They had shipwrecks, they could, uh, the wind would not blow hard, but they could not, uh, go further westward and further uh, northward to Rome. Uh, during the storm, God teaches us to be patient. Okay. We should not uh, have that, uh, what they call this one? This one, a happy word. Yala yala. We cannot do that one in God. It is always patience with Him. If you are going to walk with God, you should be very patient. And with that patience, we should first practice it. It comes with the practice uh, of waiting. We should wait. Everything fall, will fall in God's time. We cannot rush God. If you will rush God, it's the more that you will not get uh, what uh, you are asking, what you will pray for. Uh, in, uh, we still have uh, lots of that's uh, in the Canos here. Yeah. That's uh, what we call Hanna Hanga Parapuran de Apodios. No dagdaga miso na, agoray ka. Uh, what I mean here, what I mean is here, you should wait. Do not trust God, and He will grant your wish. He will grant your prayers. And uh, next part, as, uh, if you practice uh, patience, there's always a purpose in patience. Let there be the purpose of waiting. As I've said, we should not trust God. We have to wait. Just like uh, Apostle Paul, he will patiently wait. If you're going to look at uh, Apostle Paul and the uh, book of Acts, all throughout you can see that he's been mocked. He's been mocked. Uh, from every where he preaches, there's always a commotion. But for every commotion, God is always with him. God would always send someone to his rescue so that he will be safe at bay from uh, one place until he reaches to the uh, next uh, town or next uh, country that is going to be. It was all patience, patience, patience. He practiced it and the purpose of uh, 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 waiting is it uh, encourages us to uh, be skillful in our life. When we say uh, skillful, uh, we should uh, uh, 
Pasensya na po na tuyo na. Uh, when we say uh, skillful, it uh, says uh, uh, what, uh, what do you mean by word skillful? We should uh, learn how to uh, pick our battles. We cannot always wage uh, a battle when we face a storm. When we cannot uh, win, it's, it's uh, pray to God. Ask for His guidance, uh, ask for uh, courage and wisdom, and uh, the rest will uh, come into fold. Next, the next P that will come uh, along during the storm is people. God gives people during the storms. I remember this one that four years ago, and exactly four years, more than already, uh, four years and uh, one month today. A person by the, uh, by the name of Brother Renel Calio invited me to come to the church. The, uh, the first week, the first Friday that I came here, I attended the Catholic Church in uh, uh, Zon Religious Complex. And then the second week in my After that first invitation, I never went back there. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because it's here that I found the truth. Yeah. At the time of crisis, sometimes uh, storm, God will always send me somebody. I came from Saudi Arabia for 14 and a half weeks. And in Saudi Arabia, for the weeks, I've been to the born again, I've been to the Catholics, I've been to the BDS and Christo. Christo. If there's one thing which is plenty during those uh, times that I attended, those, uh, let's say, congregation or retail religion, there's always plenty of food. Really, food is so plenty. And the most generous ones are the Iglesia. They have lots of food, but the preaching of the Word of God is so small. That's why I'm always hungry. What is the truth? I cannot, I cannot just uh, uh, convert to Islam during that time because uh, it never crossed my mind of now. Because those who were converting to Islam, this one's recorded. <laughs> anyway, I'm ready to be taken. Because uh, those people who were converting to Islam, it's only two things. They met another wife, or they want to stay long in their uh, place of work. Because any other religion in that area is persecuted. That's why if you can see lots of nurses there, particularly Catholics, they convert to Islam just to stay in their work, or else they'll be out. <laughs> Everybody will be ganging out of them. I've seen a lot. I have ten friends, eight of them converted just to stay. The other two, they went home. They don't want to go to them. And uh, next, during the storm, God gives uh, people. And what is uh, this uh, people that uh, God given? They give, uh, they are uh, there to do for our consolation. They console us. They encourage us, they teach us what the truth is, they teach the word of God, they teach the ways of God. And at the end of the day, we finally know not that's the truth, but we learn how to be to be a Christian. And during the uh, time that we are consoled by this, uh, uh, God sent uh, personalities. What happens? It encourages fellowship. This is what we need during the storm. In other words, in the Filipino language, uh, we call it uh, Damayani. We come together as one family. That's what we do. We don't uh, look at one another. We don't want to look what smudge they have on their faces. We don't look at what their clothes are. We don't look at their clothes. In other words, we will not behave like fault finders. Instead, we have to behave like a brethren who knows what the word fellowship is. 
and that's the purpose of uh, God sent people. The next is, it encourages acceptance. This is the time that when uh, Paul finally reached Rome after the storm and the revenue upon this one. Ape Forum is uh, around 40 miles from where he was and 30 miles from the south. It really is far. And during the times, it's either you have an ox to ride on to or you have to you know, go by foot. And uh, during those times, it's uh, a matter of half of the people who live there, they have a mode of transportation and the others they have to walk on foot. So, as far as uh, that uh, 30 to 40 miles, they came to see Paul. And Paul was so encouraged when we see these people who came from the far flung corners Italy just to meet him. They want to meet the people who, three years earlier, in his, in his episodes to the Romans, they were eager to know who the, uh, who the guy was. They haven't seen Paul. They only read his letters. And that's uh, why from uh, all walks of life, all brethren, when they learned to, that uh, Paul finally landed in uh, uh, Italy, they came to see him. I remember uh, during the time when I was uh, traveling with Brother Jusil. Is Brother Jusil still around? I can't miss him. I always uh, make sure that I always uh, shake his hand every time we meet. We can't miss him. He was, he's one of those guys with the biggest bodies in the church. Well, uh, well I think uh, three years ago, it was uh, the time that uh, I was still uh, uh, learning how to be a uh, Baptist. Okay, I had those uh, trips with him. He would uh, ask me in the afternoon, he would uh, ask me if I could uh, join him through the journey. Okay. The, the one, out of, uh, well, at first it was out of curiosity, the first part of journey with him. But uh, for me, it was an acceptance. As we go along, because if you're going to uh, travel from here up to Alcor and back, as if you travel from uh, the Filipinos, maybe you're familiar, from Robinson's Galleria in Orticas to SM in Bulacan and back. That's how far it was. Although it was a two and a half, two and a half, two and a half hours journey, it was uh, a fruitful one. So uh, from there, I learned to accept uh, the truth. The truth, there's no, if you're going to travel along with uh, Brother Jusil, no that moments. Yeah. Really, no that moments. Uh, he will be preaching lightly, he will not go deep. There will be jokes in between, and at the end of the journey, you will learn a lot. And you will learn to accept the facts, the facts of being a Christian, the facts of uh, God. And the facts that goes everything. Amen. And I thank uh, Brother Chil with that one. Uh, next, with uh, consolation comes assistance. In every part that uh, Apostle Paul went, he's always been assisted. From the uh, when the last time I preached here, it's about his trial in uh, Jerusalem. He was assisted by one of his uh, Roman centurions. Upon learning that he's a Roman, because during that time you cannot persecute a Roman unless you have a probable cause. That's uh, the truth about uh, persecution. Even the courts today, it came from the Romans. The process you cannot persecute someone with a probable cause. So what that uh, Roman centurion did? He gathered all his men. He uh, he ordered them to take Paul by force because he's already been punched, he's been clubbed, he's been kicked. Because there was a riot already. Uh, the uh, accusation was that he's uh, stirring a commotion among the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's introducing another religion in which those two groups hated during that time. 
And uh, let's backtrack a bit. Acts 18, when he was preaching in uh, Corinth. Acts 18 verses uh, 9 to 10. Uh, our Lord, our dear Lord God, spoke to Apostle Paul in a vision, in a dream, which says, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no one shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. It's true that for every city that he went until he reached home, there are always brethren who was always ready to help him uh, go through the trials that he, is, he has uh, faced for every uh, preaching. And uh, with consolation comes it encourage, uh, encouragement of uh, steadfastness. When we say steadfastness, we mean continuity of life. At the middle, at the beginning, middle, and the end of the storm, we should not be stagnant. We should continue. Life has to go on, however life it is. And uh, with that, the last P that we're going to have is God gives persistence during the storms. Persistence in Tagalog, katatagan. We should be as sturdy as a big tree during a storm, or as pliant as a bamboo who will just sway to where the wind blows. That's how we should be as brethren, or as believers. And with that uh, persistence, we will always uh, have point A, courage in the Lord. He will not leave us. If you're going to look at the Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 11. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wise spirit of the devil. That's true. We should be courageous during the storm, or else the devil will snare us. You know the devil. He will snare someone who is weak. At your weakest point, that's an opportunity that he will come into your life. So whenever we face a storm, we should be courageous. It's not just for us, but this show courage uh, in the name of the Lord. And uh, next, Courage for the missions. Apostle Paul was uh, one of those uh, men in the Bible who never get tired of preaching, no matter what. From every city, from every place, there's always a commotion. It's either he gets uh, mocked, he gets punched, he gets kicked, physical suffering, and uh, even accused mostly, but he never stopped. The mission continued. It even, he even reached until Rome. He even had the snake bite in Rome, but uh, since he just uh, shrugged it off as if it's nothing, there was no cure, because God is with him. Amen. The venom did not went to his their system. It just stayed there on the wound. And the people in uh, Italy thought that he was a god. But he's not. But uh, that snake bite. He used that snake bite to, not just to cure the sick in uh, Italy, but to cure the hearts of the people. That's what he did. Okay, uh, to conclude, Uh, in conclusion, uh, you can just read along with me. A believer's faith shall be subjected to test through storms at any given point in time. Weathering a storm teaches us to be patient 
for there is always calmness after the storm and uh, all returns to peace. That's true. Storms have a way of bringing people closer together. Families, communities, seeking shelter in each other. That's what they always do at times of, uh, let's say, uh, hardships. I've seen it here. From a simple uh, fever to some of our skills. We gather. Storm makes us persistent no matter what uh, stumble blocks lie ahead of us. At the end of the day, we will remind we will be reminded that when a storm comes, it is God's doing. And just as he allows the storm to brew, he also comes to cease. He is the Prince of Peace. Let us not forget that when we are in a trial, that we have, that when we, I can, sorry, I can't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> At the end of the day, we will be reminded that when a storm comes, it's God's to win. Just as he allows the storm to brew, he, uh, he also comes to see he is the Prince of Peace. Let us not forget when we are in trial, but when we turn our attention to being his masterpiece, we can find peace in knowing that he would never allow anything we couldn't, we couldn't handle. In Filipino, hindi naman tayo bibigyan ng Panginoon ng mga pagsubok na hindi natin kakayanin. Very good. Okay? He uses the storm to refine us and cleanse us in movement to, towards our greater good. For this is the lessons of the storm. It reminded me of one of those uh, famous uh, personalities in Japan. Okay, uh, the guy who created Astro Boy, okay, has a contemporary, as a friend, was a contemporary Japanese writer. He's also famous. Uh, the one who created Astro Boy is, I think, a decade older than this man, uh, which says. Uh, in one of his uh, literary, literary writings, it says, When the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through, how you survived. You won't even be sure when the storm is over. It's true. After a storm we pass, another storm comes. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what the storm is all about. For every storm, it changes us. It gives us uh, patience. People comes along and we became, we became uh, persistent. Uh, I hope that for every storm that comes in our life, we should not be at our weakest points or else the devil will come. We should stand for what we believe in, stand because God is always with us. When He's with us, who can go with us?